All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Black Experience. How is everybody doing? I hope everyone is having a great time. For all you students out there, I hope finals is going well. Uh, I finished my finals yesterday, so I'm feeling good, feeling like ready to go at it now. Um, and happy holidays. Holiday season is in full swing. Today, guys, I have a very special guest with me today. I have been knowing her for several years. Uh, she was a part of the BSU Black Student Union. She has a band, and she's about to graduate in a couple of days. She's awesome. She is Tima. Tima, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited to be on today. You know, it's been a while, you know, yeah. since we've actually had like a proper conversation and stuff. So I'm very excited to be on. It has been. It has been. And yeah. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, yeah. Again, I don't know why it took me this long to, to bring you back on, but it's, <laughs> it's been a joy to, you know, to see all the guests and now have you here, especially considering you're about to graduate in a few days. Yeah. yeah? I'm very excited to be out, you know, into the working world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me, are you more looking forward to the the just the freedom you're going to have now i guess just being away from assignments and and that kind of stress and into the 9 to 5 or is there something else you're looking more forward um, to i guess that like you know yeah. schoolwork and stuff like it's always a pain in the ass to do but like i'm excited to have more like independence like moving into my first place and just kind of like letting myself be me and do me instead of being like confined into like you know all these social expectations that yeah. comes with college and stuff but Tell me about it. Tell me about it. That's what's up, Tima. So, yeah. So let to start out. Um, I feel like, again, like I, I I've I've known you for several years, but I've never really gotten to know you, know you like on a on a personal level or something like that. Yeah. But if you want to just start with kind of like your background a little bit and kind of what that journey was like background wise, and then coming here to Western. Okay, so I'm from Puyallup, Washington. Um, my parents are from Sierra Leone, so I like grew up in like a West African household. Yeah. Um, so, like, I guess my journey to Western was kind of, like, not that, like, exciting because, like, I'm not, like, the best at academics and stuff. So I was, like, worried, like, am I even going to get into college and stuff? But, yeah. like, Western accepted me and I liked the campus and it was beautiful. And I heard that the music scene was popping and music is, like, something that's always been a part of my life. Like, yeah. since I was, like, five, like, I learned the piano then. So I was, like, okay, I'll try out this college. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was pretty just, like, smooth sailing after I knew that I got in. Right. Yeah. What's funny is, you, do, you, do you remember Moses? Yeah, I So remember. Moses, shout out to Moses if, he's, if you're listening to this, but when Ben told me about him, because initially it was just going to be Ben and I in a double, um, and mm -hmm. he was going to be a third, our third roommate, and he told me he's from Sierra Leone. So I Google Sierra Leone language. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, let me just prank him just to like break the ice and see what I can do. And I saw that how they body? Yeah, how do you body? How do you body? <laughs> yeah. yeah, is the way to say how are you doing? Yeah. And I texted him that, and he's like, "How do you know that?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I just I responded with "the body fine." Yeah, like, oh. how do you body? The <laughs> body fine. That's so funny because like. Uh, when I first came to Western, you know Nafi yes. and Kelsey. Yep. That's like the first thing I taught them. I was like, oh yeah, just be like, how do you buddy if you meet like my parents and stuff? <laughs> and Kelsey would always be like, oh, how do you buddy? And then my mom is like, e, he knows it. And I was like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> I just taught him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny. So Sierra Leone, it, it has, what is that, British influence? Like, was yeah. British colonialism and all that stuff? Yeah, basically. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure like Freetown was like, the town where, like, after, like, you know, slavery yeah. ended, like, everyone went to Freetown and stuff like that. But, yeah, a lot of, like, British colonialism and stuff like that. But I don't know a lot about the background of Sierra Leone. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, coming here to Western, I mean, obviously, Sierra Leone is, you know, an African country. It has mm -hmm. its own African cultures and stuff. I mean, there's no way it was easy probably coming to Western and being like, man, it's like, not diverse at yeah. all. It's like, what is it, 4% black or something like that, even less maybe? Yeah, I um, knew what I was getting into. Like, my friends were like, that school's white as hell. And I was like, yeah, no way. It's fine. Like, I'll deal with it. And, like, Puyallup is pretty white, but it's definitely more diverse than, like, you know, Western and stuff. Right. But my first roommate was actually also West African, so I guess that kind of brought a little bit of comfort, even though, like, yeah. I would say that, like, our African traditions were two completely different because like my parents they assimilated so they didn't really mm. have like strong african like household values so i was like more like you know i could do not really do what i want but you know i had more freedom to just like 
talk to them however but yeah. like yeah no yeah but i, I think that. that helped me like get into the groove of being in western and also like yeah i met other pocs too luckily yeah. for my first week so yeah. it wasn't too bad like yeah. i didn't feel out of place that's good yeah that's really good i felt the same way with ben actually because ben was also eritrean mm -hmm. and so whenever i'm in the dorms i'm like bro you know we talking in our language or whatever and that just kind of just helped me as well just like remind me where i'm from you know Cause yeah. like i'd be out there like 10 hours a day on campus whatever just speaking English, and then I'd come back to him, and I'd be like, okay, here we go. We're eating our injera, you know what I mean? Yeah. Going, we're like, heating it up or whatever, so I feel that. So I'm, I'm curious. You said you knew that you were getting yourself into a school that was not diverse, yeah. which is not always easy for people. Why did you still choose to come to Western? So it was the furthest away from home, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> okay. I was like, okay, like, my main thing is, like, to – even though, like I said, my parents are a little bit more, like, on the assimilated side, they're still, like, very strict with what I do. So I was like, okay, if I go the furthest, they're not going to ask me to come home a lot. So it was either between, like, going to Western or Wazoo. But I was like, okay, Wazoo's a little bit too far, and it's too much of, like, you know, yeah. fratty party and stuff. But I guess I just did Western because it was, like, more chill, you yeah. know? And, like... I guess, like, the white students here are, like, liberal. So, like, you know, they'll kind of, like, treat you a little better. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I was the same way, actually. That, that's so funny because Wazoo also accepted me. Yeah. Um, but my, my parents were just like, it's too far. Yeah. It's too far. And me, I, I, I on the other hand, opposite from you, I wanted to be a part of, like, a frat and stuff. I don't <laughs> really? know if you could see me as that. But I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be like, yeah, man, you know, yeah, just bro. just go crazy, bro, whatever, something like that. But uh, I feel that. I feel that. So you came here to Western, and, you know, now you're on the brink of graduation, uh, but you were also part of the Black Student Union. Yeah. Um, and we were, like, a year apart because I was on the board before you. Uh, kind of like, how was that first experience seeing BSU, and what um, was that experience like? I think it was fun. Like, the board, it was Definitely, like, I was on board with my friends at the time, so it was really fun. I was excited, and, like, we were planning a lot of new things. But I think because of us being friends on the board, it kind of, like, we didn't get a lot done, you know, that we mm. needed to get. But I don't know. Like, the overall experience was fun, and I do enjoy being in a leadership role, and I definitely want to continue to be in a leadership role outside of college and, like, when I get into my workplace and stuff mm. like that. But... Yeah, it was definitely hard to navigate trying to, like, get people to come to BSU, too, and just, mm. like, planning and sorting things out. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm, I'm almost surprised because because you guys were such close friends, I feel like that would help in, like, bringing in people, and then they would see the friendship of the, of the group and be like, oh, okay, if I come to BSU more, maybe I could be, have right. friends like that. I guess, like, what, what do you think – you guys could have done better or maybe um, what went hap what happened i guess yeah. well i think like fall quarter we definitely did have a good turnout and like mm -hmm. that helped but i think as time started to drag on we became more like lenient with each other like oh bro it's fine like you don't have to come to this meeting duh, 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 this kind of like you know procrastinating almost so i feel like that's what kind of like stopped the momentum of bsu right. getting better and also like uh i think our president at the time was about to graduate too, so he was kind of stepping away, and it's like, okay, we need like more people to fill the position. It was right. just kind of getting like, we just didn't have like a cohesive, you know, I yeah. don't know, leadership skills all together because we all thought differently. Right. And you know, like just because you're close friends with someone doesn't mean like your leadership skills are the same. Facts. So that's, that's facts. why I feel like, oh, it kind of like turned into mush because we all didn't think the same way. That's completely facts, mm -hmm. yeah. I think the year I became president in 2021, 2022, the fact that I barely knew the other board members was both a pro and con. Because it was pro, on the other hand, because we were able to be consistent. Yeah. Because we didn't hang out afterwards. Um, and we were able to, like, do those meetings. But then at the same time, it was, like, around winter, especially, remember, winter 22, where it was, like, online – Oh, yeah. In person, online in person. We were like, man, we got to hang out. And we just never really got to really hang out. And we felt like we were missing each other and felt like we were kind of just treating everyone as just a number, you know, on the board member. And yeah. so it was something we struggled with. But I could see what you mean by that, though. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I did like being on BSU overall. I just wish like if we had like someone that was just like more strong headed and being like, hey guys, we need to do this yeah. and you need to get it done by this day instead of just like, oh, whenever it's done, you know? Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And I also had the chance to be in Black Women Revolutionary for like that one year, oh, I think word. 21, 22. But like, yeah. We weren't able to get a lot of people on there, but that board was also really fun because, you know, I got to be with, like, you know, a lot of black women yeah. and try to plan something for the community. And I wish that that board was able to continue, but no one wanted to be on board after, which kind of really? sucks. Jeez. But, yeah. How's the club doing right now? Is it still uh, I don't even think it's active. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, yeah. if anyone wants to step up, you know, and get black women together, like... Someone got to do something about yeah. that. Y'all hear her. You know, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you guys have one well, need those leadership experience, you know, definitely step up. That's big. That's big. Yeah. Let's talk about music yeah. and your music band. The first time I saw y'all perform, I believe, was West Fest last year, 2022. Yeah, we did that. And I saw the stage, and I was like, is that Tima? <laughs> what the heck? Is that Liam, too? I was, I was literally confused because I was like, Ain't no way my friends have a band. I don't know <laughs> that they've been having this band. Yeah. How did that start? So, uh, when was it? I don't know. It was like Halloween. I forgot which year. It was me and my friend Malik. He's the singer of my band. It's called Kitty Obsidian, by the way. <laughs> but, yeah, he was like, he's the singer of that band. But we both liked music, and we thought that we had similar styles. So I was like, Liam, can you tell Malik that I want to do music <laughs> with him? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he said he wants to do music with you, too. And I lived in a house, you know where Fairhaven is? Yeah. Yeah, we like lived by Boulevard and my roommate, uh, Sophia, she does like a lot of art markets and whatnot. And she started like a thing called Birdhouse Art Markets. And we had like a yard where we were able to hold like markets, basically where vendors will come and sell their art. So we were like, okay, can we perform here since you're having live music? And she's like, sure. So it was me, Malik, Liam, and there's this guy named Ashton that played saxophone. So yeah. it's just us four. And we didn't even have a drummer or a bassist. So we like played with like a backing track. <laughs> this guy was a little ghetto. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we had to make do with what we you had. You gotta start with what you can. Yeah. yeah so sure. that was like our first performance. And then uh, Liam and Malik, they are roommates. And they also live with a bunch of other musicians. So we got um, Eric and Elliot to join. So Eric's our bassist and Elliot's our former drummer. We're looking for a new drummer. So if anyone wants to play. <laughs> but. Yeah, we all came together and we're like, okay, let's start doing music. Yeah. And I forgot where it was our first performance all together. I can't remember, but that's how it just started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the, I guess, what's like the overall plan for you guys? Because I know you're graduating, Liam's graduating. Do mm -hmm. y'all plan on continuing or what does that future look like? Um, well, we want to continue to do music as long as like me and Liam are still here. So, like, I want to still play until, like, I leave. But there's probably not going to be, like, a further future plan. Right. But just, you know, getting as much time as we can together just to play a couple more shows. Yeah. But yeah. No, I bet. And especially, like, having, I don't know what the focus for your guys' music taste is or music group is, but mm -hmm. just having that, like, you know, seeing, you know, black artists on the band, you know, obviously not all of you guys, but seeing that mm -hmm. in a city where it's not so diverse I'm sure, you know, means a lot to other people like myself when I see that yeah. into artists, you know? So. Yeah, I feel like that does kind of, like, set a way for, like, more POC artists to play and stuff. Because, you know, the music scene is also very white and very indie rock type. Uh -huh. So we kind of bring, like, diversity because we're not playing loud music all the right. time. So I think that kind of, like, gave us a push of, like, having more of, like, a base or, like, a fan base, I guess. Yeah. Because, yeah, there's not a lot of people that do R&B or just, like, pop and chiller music. But also, in a way, I do feel like we did get tokenized because they're like, ooh, POC's in a band. So, like, you know, Western asked us to play a lot, which, like, I appreciate getting reached out. But I feel like because, like, we are, like, black artists, we do tend to get token, like, you know, mm. tokenism and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's For also real. a plus because then we get to do more, you know. Exactly. It's kind of like a little... Eh, I don't yeah. know how to explain it's it. Like it's pros and cons type yeah. of thing. I don't know if you've gotten this before, but something my friends always, it, like they say it as a joke, but they're always like, <clears throat> with music, if I'm not listening to rap, if I'm not listening to the culturally stereotyped black music, whatever, mm -hmm. 
if I, I actually have been trying to get into indie and something different, you know what I mean? Just because yeah. rap gets so boring. I'm like, dang, again, another Lil Wayne song, <laughs> something like that, you know? Yeah. But I always get a, you know, why are you listening to that white music type of Oh yeah. Type of thing. Have you ever gotten that and have you have your band overall has gotten that before? Um, no, our band hasn't gotten that, but definitely me growing up I have gotten that. Like yeah. I was into boy bands and like K pop and stuff, so people were like, Why are you listening to that? Like yeah. But yeah, no, um, our band hasn't gotten that. That'd be surprising if someone did ask us that because I'm like, we are kind of playing R and B and soul, but Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah I don't I don't know I, it, it's just like it's never really bothered me too much but it's like you know I think black music necessarily like yeah we have black artists but you know to say white music or something like that you know I don't I don't think we should put a put a race necessarily on music you know yeah especially since like black people are the foundation of music anyway so it's mm-hmm. like we kind of made indie or we made rock too so like, like everything that. is black music you <laughs> exactly. know so no, I like yeah. that I like that yeah. Um, Let's talk about kind of navigating Western and just navigating uh, because you you're, you're you've been part of a band you know mm-hmm. been part of BSU you've got your school stuff you're doing right now for someone who's coming in let's say someone who has a lot right now on their t- on their table um, I guess what are some things that have helped you to kind of navigate all these things and extracurriculars you've got to kind of like be able to manage and you know keep your mind at peace you know despite all these things? Honestly, I have the worst time management. So, like, for someone coming in, um, I think it's best to, like, prioritize yourself first. Like, I wish I would have done that, like, throughout Mm. all my years. I think that's something that I lacked in. Like, prioritizing your time first. Like, make sure you do your schoolwork. Make sure you do, like, the hobbies that you want to do first. And then maybe think about, like, other things, like your friends and whatnot. But it's just important to, like, make sure you're doing okay. Right before you start making sure if other people are doing okay. You know, does that make sense? Expand a little bit more on that. Like, I feel like, so college, like, you have a lot to do. You're kind of, like, in your own community Mm -hmm. in a sense. And, like, you know, you get peer pressure to do things, like hang out with friends all the time, Mm -hmm. and you want to do what your friends want to do. And it's funny because my mom is always like, you always want to do what your friends want to do. And I'm like, no, I have my own thoughts. But she's kind of right. Like, after graduating, I feel like, a lot of the things that I did was because my friends were doing it instead of, like, doing what's good for me, like, even, like, major-wise or just, like, you know, job-wise and, you know, where I want to go. So I feel like that is uh, advice I'd want to give someone navigating Western. Like, even though you have these friends influencing you, make sure you're still true to yourself and Mm -hmm. your decisions. Would you say, based on your current major right now and kind of, like, what you've been able to do in college, like, no regrets, you feel like that's truly what Tima would want to do? Mm, I think since Western has, like, a limited amount of majors, sure. like, honestly, I wouldn't really want to be a comm major, but I'm like, that's the easiest one mm-hmm. and the most versatile one that can get me any job. Mm-hmm. But if there was more of, like, a music mm-hmm. production or, like, music business, like, then mm-hmm. that's something that I truly want to do. But uh, from what Western has, like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine doing, like, communications and business yeah. minor. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, Tima. That's awesome. Uh, to kind of wrap things up, um, I love ending on this note just because, you know, I get so many kinds of responses, um, and I'm always learning from guests mm-hmm. whenever I ask them this question. But what advice would you give to, let's say, it could be either a freshman or to just, let's say, freshman year Tima mm-hmm. and just your younger self right now? Let's say that Tima was sitting right here next to us, what advice would you give her? Honestly, I tell her like relax. Like everything is not that deep. I don't yeah. know how to explain it, but like college isn't like the thing, you know? It's just another like um path that you have to take to get to like the next level. Like mm-hmm. you shouldn't think that like college is going to define you basically mm. or like people are going to define you. Like just relax, do what you want to do cuz like it doesn't matter at the end. Like mm-hmm other people's opinions don't matter and stuff and I feel like that's what younger team needs to hear yeah Yeah. that's really good that's really good I appreciate you having a a, coming on the podcast um any last minute social media plugs I know you've kind of plugged your brand already (laughs) and other stuff but is there anything you want to shout out before we close um yeah follow my band kitty.obsidian on instagram um 
I have nothing else to plug, yeah. honestly. But That's it. Yeah. Well, you guys heard her. Follow her music band. You know, tune in to her. I know more music is to come. Am I yes. correct? Yes. <laughs> uh, we wish you the best for graduation. I'll be there at graduation. You know, seeing you walk and stuff. And <laughs> wish you the best in all future endeavors, Tima. Mm -hmm. We hope you guys enjoyed this awesome episode. Stay tuned for more awesome episodes as season three rolls on. And enjoy your holidays. Hope everyone stays safe. And we'll see y'all in the new year. Take care.